quite common for singers to become hoarse after singing or get that dry prickly feeling in their throat. It feels awful. This is something you should avoid at all costs because it indicates some inflammation or trauma at the vocal folds. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the cause of hoarseness and strain and how to overcome this very common issue for singers. I'll give you some invaluable exercises that will make perfect sense to you so you can draw on these every time you sing. Welcome to Voice Generation. I'm Anne Lowe and this is Penny. Say hello, Penny. <laughs> I've studied music and singing for over 50 years. I've been a professional singer, musician, performer and teacher for 40 years, teaching and coaching all levels, all ages and singing teachers, either one-to-one -one up to large vocal workshops. I encourage you to persevere with this very solid foundation my teaching gives you at any level you're at. So just come as you are, it's informative, forward moving and fun. And remember, always, good vocal health always comes first. Vocal strain and fatigue equates to a dry, prickly sensation in your throat during or after singing, hoarseness or a husky sound and or loss of voice. Please never think a husky voice is good. It is not. It's a red flag that says something's not quite right and if any of the above symptoms continue, you should stop singing. Please go and see an ear, nose and throat specialist as soon as possible. There's a plethora of health conditions that can affect your voice, but the most common ones to rule out are things like reflux, nodules or nodes, but do go and see your doctor if it persists. I'm going to give you this very brief targeted anatomy lesson here, which is specific to the exercise I'll be giving you later in the video. Your vocal folds are tissue made up of four layers of cells. When you breathe, your vocal folds are in this position the space between the true vocal folds is called the glottis. When you prepare to make sound, your vocal folds move together to vibrate and look like this. The vocal folds are attached to cartilages called the arytenoid cartilages. You can see they're shaped like little pyramids. The arytenoid cartilages are connected to a complex array of laryngeal muscles and cartilages such as the cricoid and thyroid cartilages. And without digging in too deeply into the anatomy and losing the crowd, in a nutshell, the arytenoid cartilages open and close the vocal folds and elongate the vocal folds. Your true vocal folds have virtually no feeling, but the arytenoid cartilages are extremely sensitive. So when you feel a sore throat from singing, it's your arytenoid cartilages that are sending that message to you. Now, assuming you're in good health and vocal strain is an occasional situation, here are two common causes you really need to know and understand how to overcome. And it's all related to the air used as you sing. So common cause number one, onsets. And common cause number two, a false vocal fold constriction. Let's have a look at the three onsets first. What are onsets? Well, onsets are the way the breath and vocal folds come together to start a note. They're the way you approach lyrics with sound. Here's an exercise for your awareness. I'm going to get you to say the following sounds after me. Then I'm going to get you to say them silently. I want you to take notice of what you felt and heard each time. It's a good idea also just to take notes on this for your own reference. Number one, glottal onsets. Some other terms for glottal onsets are glottal attack or glottal stroke. So say this after me. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Now say that silently. Uh oh, uh oh. What did you feel? What did you hear? Did you notice a burst? Almost like a very tiny cough? What happens with a glottal onset is the vocal folds close first, then the exhalation begins. The second onset we're looking at is the aspirate onset. Say this after me. Hey, hey. Now say it silently. Hey, hey. What 
did you feel? And what did you hear? Did you notice a breathiness with the aspirate onset? What happens with an aspirate onset is the exhalation begins first then the true vocal folds close to vibrate. Number three is our smooth onset. Say this after me. You, you, you. Now say it silently. What did you notice? And what did you feel? Did you find this very smooth and, and um, soothing? What happens here? is your vocal folds and air come together at the same time. What did you feel and what did you hear? Did you notice it was smooth and soft? The sound is very soothing. We often unconsciously use this as a mothering voice or a way to speak to our pets. Oh, you're a good girl, Penny. Very good girl. And they always respond beautifully when you're speaking with them like that because it's just the onset that we're talking about here. What happens with a smooth onset is the exhalation and true vocal folds come together at the same time, which is ideal for healthy vocal fold vibration. Now you've been familiarized with onsets, you've experienced the sensation or the coordination of the breath and the vocal folds for each of the three onsets. You've experienced what the sound is like, and what it feels like, and you noticed all those sensations. Here's the next important point I want you to understand. Air used to power your vocal folds to vibrate is either your friend or your enemy. It is your friend if you actively engage smooth onsets, but if your normal approach or your default or attractor state is singing aspirate or hard glottal, chances are you'll experience vocal fatigue or trauma. So if you hear air in your sound, your vocal folds are not working efficiently. And here's a point to ponder. The speed of sound travels at 1,128 feet per second, which means Pushing too much air through your vocal folds as you're singing sets you up for wind burn in your larynx and your arytenoids. How about that? Common cause number two, false vocal fold constriction. There's a few ways false vocal fold constriction occurs. One of the ways is engaging in harsh glottal onsets. Now a very close relative to hard glottal onsets is coughing and one of the greatest forms of vocal strain is excessive coughing. When we cough our vocal folds open wide as we take a big breath in then simultaneously our false vocal folds close over the top of the true vocal folds. The epiglottis closes over the trachea. Your diaphragm muscles contract. Increased pressure builds up behind the true vocal folds, false vocal folds and epiglottis, then forces the air out rapidly at around about, get this, 100 miles per hour. That's 160 kilometers per hour. Now exactly how does this relate to vocal hoarseness or fatigue when I sing? Let's look at our trusty glottal onsets. In the English language, we use a combination of vowels and consonants to make up every word. Every vowel starts with a glottal onset as we sing them. So sound the vowels out here with me. See what you think. Ah, eh, e, oh, ah. And again. Ah, eh, e, oh, ah. I'll do it again with a little cough. All these vowels are glottal onsets and they're also the anatomical onset of a cough. And this is where even the most experienced singers can and do find their voices fatiguing or burning out. So what's the solution? The solution is to apply smooth onsets to your lyrics and smooth onsets take a fair bit of practice and muscular activity. And you must make preparation for this type of onset. Here's how. Speak this glottal phrase out. Apples and eggs in and over us. Say it again. Apples and 
eggs in and over us. Say you. You. Now slow the y and place an e at the beginning of the y. E you. E you. E you. Now make the e silent and the y audible. Y. Y. Do you notice the position of your tongue? It remains in the e position as you're saying y. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's start by saying e-apple. E-apple. Now we make the e silent as we now say apple. 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 So you'll notice the glottal is rolling off the e And there is your smooth onset. If you try it again, e Apple, 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 apple. You could say yapple to start with. Yapple, apple, apple, apple. You're creating a smooth onset and your vocal folds are not smashing together with that glottal attack or onset, which can be quite harsh, particularly when you're building up um, a lot of energy when you're singing something quite passionate and big. It's very, very easy for glottal onsets to cause fatigue. Now it does take some practice, but do persevere with it and you'll find it becomes easier and more familiar as you keep using this technique. Work on mastering one word at a time before moving on to the next word. If this video was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up and let me know how you got on in the comments below. And please subscribe, ring the bell, and share with anyone else who might benefit from this video or from any of my videos. Until then, I'll see you next week. Bye.